Coming out again, I'd like to introduce U.S. Coast Guard Captain Mark Vaughn up here with me today. Give you an update on what today's operations have entailed. We've had about 100 searchers that are working out of the Brunswick, Jacksonville, and Savannah inlets. That's on 35 boats. That number's up a little bit from this morning. Uh, we've had about 50 searchers working out of the Charleston, South Carolina uh, inlet, and that's on eight boats. We've, we've completed the search of about 5,000 square miles today. Uh, Savannah Fire Rescue even had their fire boat out offshore looking as well today, helping us with that search. Not a lot of updates on uh, what was found. There's not really been a lot found again today. Um, donations, again, uh, jacksonville.jfrd.com, uh, help find them is the link. Tomorrow, we're, uh, we're in some critical times right now. Uh, time is really, as we said at noon, time has really become our enemy. And uh, we're really having to, to move forward with this. Something, something's got to happen. Um, so we're going to continue the search, but it's going to be moving north. We're not going to be putting anybody out of the Jacksonville Inlet or the Brunswick Inlet. The models are showing, the Coast Guard models are showing us that we need to be concentrating in the South Carolina area. So we have coordinated with South Carolina and Savannah, and we're going to be putting some boats out of the South Carolina Inlet tomorrow and, and uh, Charleston, South Carolina. Anybody wishing to volunteer, it needs to be a, as we have been saying, it needs to be a, a boat capable of working 60 miles offshore and for extended periods of time. So they need to have that fuel range. And if they're interested, they can call Chief Trace Barrow again at 904-813-5315. Again, as I do every, every one of these press conferences, I want to thank the community for their, their support. And I want to thank the Coast Guard for their what, the, what they're doing is it, it, every time I meet with the captain, it's just unbelievable what he tells me that's going on out there. So, Captain, if you'd like to come forward. Thank you, Chief Powers. Um, as I said, the Coast Guard uh, continues to search. Uh, today we had uh, three different aircraft and three Coast Guard cutters uh, searching offshore uh, for a total of about 17,000 square miles this afternoon. Uh, this evening we have, a, we have another aircraft going up here shortly, and, and we have uh, two more Coast Guard cutters that will be staying out. Uh, throughout the evening and overnight as we continue search patterns. Um, as I'd mentioned earlier today, one of the, uh, one of the airplanes is actually as far north as uh, Cape Hatteras, North Carolina, searching from 90 to about 140 miles offshore as our furthest zone, uh, which really, again, typifies that we continue to be in a, in a race against the clock as, uh, as our search area has continued to expand rapidly. Um, we have not found any additional debris that we can correlate to the vessel today. Uh, that would that would that would narrow down the search for Justin and Brian. Uh, so the uh, as a, as this uh, pattern continues to expand, uh, we're going to search this afternoon. We're going to search through the night, and uh, to, as Chief mentioned, we have plans already for a uh, for a first light search tomorrow morning. At which time, as we've been doing, we'll meet together with our with all of our partners involved in the search and determine uh, determine the way ahead and whether or not we still have an opportunity to be successful. Thank you. Do you have a deadline? We don't have a set deadline. Um, the way that we've been working is as we go one, one phase at a time. Um, we will by tomorrow morning, because that is a point where the search really does grow to be untenable, we're going to have to have a conversation about whether we can continue with an active search or whether we move into regular patrol activity. Captain, this is Robert with First Coast News. Um, in terms of online chatter, there was some discussion about the possibility of a, some activity or something being found near Tybee Island address that and then also about 5.30 there was some chatter too about possibly finding something that was to the, the South Carolina Center about a light um, raft. Can you address those? So let me address both. Uh, first, the, uh, there, there was an active rest, search and rescue case off of Tybee Island today being conducted by Sector Charleston. That was completely separate from this case. Uh, so I know some people picked up some radio chatter on that. Uh, we've already talked to our counterparts up there and that is in fact a separate case. Uh, there, there was a, we found a life ring, a life vest was found today. Uh, we've already had the discussion with the family. That does not correlate to anything known to have been on board. Um, its markings were very distinct, and uh, we have not, that was not a correlatable event. What would you say to those online and the family who are hearing these things, they're getting excite, excited and hopeful, and then we hear,
here doesn't correlate with the vote. I mean, what do you say to these hopes that might be? You know, there's, there's really nothing that I, I can do or say about, you know, the, the online world that we live in. Uh, I mean, the reality is uh, for every 300 or 400 things that go out there that might constitute noise, there's always one or two tidbits every day that we take a look at twice and see if that's something that we can correlate or something that would give us a clue to move. Um, you know, the reality is that's, that's, that's the world we live in and we're, you know, we, uh, we, we, we constantly scour to see what's out there and, what, uh, and, and, and what, other, what other clues may be there. And when we do see things about debris, uh, we make sure that we've correlated that uh, back, back through our resources so that we can, like in the case of the Tybee Island Rescue, we try to get the information back to you as fast as we can so that those, uh, those stories don't grow their own, their own life. You know, we're still uh, we're still together. We're still searching today. We're still uh, we have a plan through the night. Um, I, I think with everybody, and, and certainly with the family as well as the extended families, the Fairfax, uh, the uh, firefighters here in Jacksonville, as well as our Coast Guard community and our partners, um, we're all we're all struggling, and we're all hoping to find something that would uh, that would that would give us that that would that would, that would spark. A, a, an ability to contract the search, but the reality is that we've gone more than two days now uh, since the last time we found anything that would allow us to uh, to pinpoint or to uh, circumscribe the uh, the search efforts that are going on. Which is why it's important to note that you know we're we're rapidly reaching the size of a uh, of a search of a search grid that that becomes untenable for dedicated search operations. No, so to clear up what I said, we're going to have boats going out of the Savannah and Charleston Inlets. The command center is going to remain here. We're going to run operations from here through some through our counterparts in those two cities. But uh, the command center is going to remain right where it's at. The volunteers that were here, they can just go up to maybe the Savannah or Brunswick. So, so they need to call Chief Barrow okay. and and give him the number of I mean the size of their boat, you know, and the number of people they have. And he will take a list, and then in the morning at 7 o'clock, he'll start calling them, telling them where to go. But we need everybody to coordinate through Chief Barrow. So that's very important that, that volunteers hear that so that we are able to account for everybody that's going offshore and make sure everybody is coming back safe. Well, as I've said already, we, we, we'd search one, one search period at a time. So through tonight and through through this evening and all the way through the night, and then our first light search tomorrow, those are set and those are gonna happen. It'll be during that first light search that we'll kind of have our next set of conversations about what the future may look like. All right, thank you all very much.